I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Liz Peake, writing for the Fiscal Times, looking at, in this transition moment, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, as he looks at the President-elect of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Liz, a very good evening to you. In your column, you remind me of a moment early in the Obama administration when the President traveled to the Pentagon and standing in the corner looking around. It's a very impressive building from the inside. It's vast. Standing behind him were the four uniforms of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Admiral Mullen was then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And they're being respectful to the president, who looked much younger then, and was their commander-in-chief. And they were pleased to welcome him. Eight years later, I do not believe the admiral and the generals knew at the time that Barack Obama didn't need them, that he was going to spend eight years making policy, warfighting policy, treaty policy, alliance policy, reorganizing the military of the United States, including shrinking the admiral's fleet down to about 272 ships. They didn't know that at the time, but we do now. So, so in your column, you remind all of us that during the campaign, candidate Trump said that he knew better than all the generals. He's, he's at least He's at least speaking out loud what Barack Obama wouldn't say when he was president of the United States. A very good evening to you, Liz. <laughs> good evening, John. Oh, I think it's just amazing. Uh, Trump is being Trump when he says that and criticizing some of the remaining generals. Let's, let's face it, a lot of them have jumped ship, so to speak, because under Obama, they have been reduced to political apparatchiks. I mean, uh, a lot of what Obama has done vis-a-vis the military is social progress in the military, as we all know, notwithstanding the fact that we've actually been engaged in battle against ISIS and still various other terrorist factions in Iraq and Afghanistan. The major mission of Barack Obama vis-a-vis the military has been making sure that we have room for transgenders, that women are allowed to occupy roles that uh, you know they may or may not be well equipped to deal with, et cetera. And look, all that may be positive, but I think the the view of military commanders of this president is really quite stark. There's a reason we've had three, I think, uh, secretaries of defense under Obama. They get disgusted and leave because Obama is constantly micromanaging. I mean, this is the the point I make in the piece is that Trump may sort of say out loud that he knows better than the generals. Obama actually behaves as though he knows better than the generals. And it's interesting to me, it's not just the military that Obama has always felt like he knew better than, which is really a terrible sentence, but you understand what I mean. It has also been on the economics and finance side. Uh, I was talking to someone earlier today about reminiscing, you know, talking about what Trump could do for the economy. The answer is we don't really know, because the economy has been sort of lurching along at 1% or 2% growth, clearly operating way below capacity, both in terms of factory utilization, 95 million Americans still not working, et cetera. There's a lot of room for growth. The amazing thing is, going back to the beginning, not only did he diss his generals and the military command, he also, if you recall, had not a single private enterprise person in the White House starting out, never went, he, he formed a little kind of faux advisory council of leading uh, business leaders in, the Amer- in America. He never paid attention to them. I know people who were in those meetings. He was outwardly dismissive of the, the, the most important CEOs in the country, just as Jonathan Gruber was the other day when pressed by Maria Bartiromo that they might know something about job creation. And Gruber, like Obama's response was, I don't care about CEOs. I know what I know. I mean, I've never seen a group of people so completely sure that they have all the answers when, in fact, they don't. And I think, you know, it has hurt our country. It's hurt it militarily because of the reasons you're talking about. I think it's also hurt it economically. Barack Obama, president until Inauguration Day. And then Liz is the president. And there is a, I recommend to everyone, an interview in The New Yorker with David Remnick, the editor of The New Yorker. There is the suggestion that Barack Obama doesn't believe what just happened, or he's he's thinking about it, so he's going to tell America what just happened in a way that makes it go away. It's an odd kind of denialism, but there is a role for Barack Obama. Will he 
Will he speak as if Trump is an accident? Or will he understand that Donald J. Trump is uh, is the um, the choice of the American people who elected Barack Obama? Will he accept that? I, I think, honestly, based on that interview in The New Yorker, which I also read, it sounds to me like he still has absolutely no comprehension of why Donald Trump, Trump was elected. He certainly takes no responsibility for the divisions in the country that I think helped elect Donald Trump. Uh, it, you know, he is talking about offering his counsel to Democrats. How can Democrats want his advice about anything political when he has presided over eight years of the utter destruction of the Democratic Party? And that is not an exaggeration. I mean, people have basically looked the other way as Democrats lost governorships and as as Democrats lost state legislatures. All down the ranks, Democrats are in disarray. And if they don't understand that Barack Obama and his constant push for a socially progressive agenda is the reason for that, heaven help them. I mean, as someone, I was talking to a Republican uh, Party official recently, and he said, Vermont, a Republican governor? I mean, can't they see the tea leaves here? It's incredible that the state that has elected Bernie Sanders umpty ump times to be their senator just elected a Republican governor. The Democrats have to find another way, and I don't hear yet that they, they've made that decision. They're still looking something about the Clintonistas, something about Barack Obama that's still magic for the Democrats, despite the facts you just laid out. Well, and, and I'll tell you, if, uh, you know, if we'll have four years here where Americans, if, if, if Trump can follow through on a lot of his campaign promises, Americans are going to see different policies in action. And that, to me, is very exciting. For example, I think you know probably he just uh, uh, nominated uh, this person, DeVoe, Betsy yeah, DeVoe. Betsy DeVos, so, who is, the, who is a, an entrepreneur as right. well as a politician in Michigan and is the sister of Eric Prince, who was the uh, chief founder of Blackwater. Blackwater. So very, very involved family by their bootstraps family from Michigan, yes. Yes, but also someone who is totally dedicated to school choice. Mm -hmm. And this is something I think you and I talked when I wrote a piece saying the number one issue for me is school choice because it leads to all the kinds of issues that are important to a great many Americans, upward mobility, challenging income inequality, all those things. If you have a group of people left behind in the country by dint of poor educational choices, you have to change that. And nothing about the Clinton campaign suggested that that would happen. Let's pretend for a moment that this person with the Trump White House could actually make some difference in our public schools. John, there would be nothing more exciting to all kinds of people. And by the way, the Democrats now consider their base, I think, to be basically Hispanics and blacks, uh, and maybe suburban women. Maybe that's the new coalition. I don't know, because the people they're talking about for leadership of the of the uh, party do not seem to me to be going after the union worker at all uh, and, and trying to rebuild their longtime industrial base. So I don't exactly know what they're thinking, but nothing could be more appealing to Hispanics for sure, who always list education as their top three or four priority, to see some real improvements in public education. If the Trump thing gets rolling and he actually can follow through on some of the promises of his campaign, I think the Democrats are in trouble for a while. Betsy uh, Betsy DeVos is the name, born in Michigan. She's the nominated Secretary of Education. Liz Peake of the Fiscal Times. I'm John Batchelor.